Imagine it's your birthday, but no one's around. No cake, no balloons, not even a single happy birthday message. Well, fear not, because today's mini project brings the party to you. We're building a cheerful confetti button using HTML, CSS, and a bit of JavaScript magic. With just one click, you can trigger a burst of colorful confetti on your screen, perfect for lonely birthdays, surprise celebrations, or just flexing your front-end skills. Let's dive in and make your browser throw a party. Big shout out and a heartfelt thank you to all our amazing patrons on Patreon. You're the real MVPs keeping this channel running. If you'd like to support the channel and get access to exclusive perks like the full source code for this project and more, consider subscribing to our Patreon. And by the way, only a small percentage of people who watch these videos are actually subscribed to the channel. So if you're enjoying the content, hit that subscribe button. It's free, it helps a ton. Now that we've got the party vibes going, Let's jump into the code and build this confetti button from scratch. Inside the body of our HTML, we've kept things super simple, just one button, front and center. This button has an ID of confetti button and displays the message happy birthday right on it. With our button in place, it's time to give it some style, because even a party button needs to look good before it starts throwing confetti. Let's dive into the CSS part. Let's start with the styling for the body. We're using Flexbox to center everything perfectly both horizontally and vertically thanks to the combination of display set to flex and justify content and align items both set to center. This ensures our button sits right in the middle of the screen, no matter the screen size. The height is set to 100 viewport height units so it stretches the full height of the screen. The background color is a light gray. And finally, we remove the default margin to make sure there's no unwanted spacing around the edges. Clean, centered, and ready for action. Now let's style the button to make it look inviting and clickable. We start by giving it some padding, 15 pixels on the top and bottom, and 30 pixels on the sides, so it feels spacious and clickable. The font size is set to 18 pixels, making the text clear and readable. For the background color, we're using a nice shade of blue, which gives the button a calm and professional vibe. The text color is white, creating a strong contrast that's easy on the eyes. We remove any default borders by setting it to none and then add a subtle curve with a border radius of 10 pixels to soften the edges. The cursor changes to a pointer when you hover, signaling it's interactive. And to top it all off, we add a smooth transition of 0.3 seconds, so any changes like hovering feel fluid and polished. To make the button even more interactive, we add a hover effect. When the user hovers their mouse over the button, the background color shifts to a darker shade of blue. This subtle change gives the user instant feedback, letting them know the button is active and ready to be clicked. It's a small touch, but it adds a layer of polish that makes the whole experience feel more dynamic and responsive. To make the confetti effect come to life, we need to include an external JavaScript library called Canvas Confetti. This is done by linking to the script file directly from a CDN. The URL points to the specific version 1.6.0 of the library, which handles all the heavy lifting for creating those vibrant, celebratory confetti particles. By including this script, we can access all the built-in functions of the library without having to write complex animation code from scratch. In this line, we're grabbing the button element from the HTML using JavaScript. We do this by targeting the button with the getElementById method, which allows us to select any HTML element by its unique ID. In this case, the ID is confetti button. This makes the button accessible in our script, allowing us to add event listeners and control its behavior, like triggering the confetti effect when it's clicked. In this part, we're adding an event listener to the button. The add event listener method listens for the click event, meaning whenever the user clicks the button, the function inside the parentheses will be executed. First, we define the duration for how long the confetti effect will last. We set it to 3 seconds, which is 3000 milliseconds since 1 second equals 1000 milliseconds. Next, we calculate the animation end, which is the exact time when the animation should stop. We do this by adding the duration to the current time using date.now parentheses. This gives us a future timestamp that we can compare against to know when to stop the confetti. Then, we create a defaults object to set up the confetti's appearance and behavior. This object includes start velocity 35. This defines the initial speed at which the confetti particles will be launched. The higher the value, the faster the particles move. Spread 360. This defines how wide the confetti will spread across the screen. A value of 360 means the confetti will be distributed in all directions. Ticks 120. This sets how long each confetti particle will remain on the screen before it disappears. A value of 120 indicates they will last for 120 ticks. Z-index 1000. This controls the stacking order of the confetti, ensuring it stays on top of other elements on the screen. 
Now we're setting up an interval using the setInterval function, which allows us to run a piece of code repeatedly at specified intervals in this case, every 150 milliseconds. We first calculate the time left, which tells us how much time is remaining for the confetti animation. We do this by subtracting the current time date dot now, parentheses from animation end, which we set earlier. This gives us the remaining time in milliseconds. Then, we check if time left is less than or equal to zero. If it is, that means the animation duration has ended, and we want to stop the interval from running further. We do this by calling clear interval, which stops the repeated execution of the function. Inside the interval function, we use a for loop that runs three times. Each time it runs, it triggers the confetti animation. The confetti function is called, but before we call it, we're using object.assign to combine the default confetti settings stored in the defaults. Object with new settings specific for this burst of particles. The particle count, 25, means that each time the loop runs, it generates 25 confetti particles, making the burst more exciting. The origin property defines where the confetti will come from. Here, we set xmath.random parenthesis and ymath.random parenthesis times 0.2. This means the confetti can start from a random horizontal position, x. And the vertical position, y, is constrained to the top 20% of the screen, so it doesn't scatter too far down. The number 150 represents the interval time in milliseconds between each confetti burst. The smaller this number, the more frequently confetti appears, which makes the effect feel more intense but be careful setting it too low, might cause performance issues on some browsers. Once you put it all together, clicking the button will shower your screen with colorful confetti. It's simple, joyful, and surprisingly satisfying. If you enjoyed this project and want access to the full source code, consider supporting us on Patreon. Also, did you know that only a small percentage of people who read our posts are subscribed to the YouTube channel? Hit that subscribe button, it's free, and it helps more than you think. Thanks for stopping by, and keep coding with joy.